Break. Go forward, right, keep it. Oh! Now to make this trio even better, because we got two dogs, they're both a year and a half-ish, we got another dog coming tomorrow, a year and a half-ish, they're going through their camp together, and they're at that young age where it's like, I don't know, something about that age. They're, they're, it, they're, they're just, they're, they're still a little puppy-like, but they're coming into their adulthood, so they got the testosterone and stuff, so they want to do all that stuff. They're kind of crazy. We're going to have two pitties and a melon walk. This guy's really sweet. Uh, this pity that came in yesterday, his demeanor and everything, I really like his temperament. He's, he's, on the, he's on the side of the pitties where they're uh, a little less dangerous, so that's cool. Malinois, you know what to expect. He's, he's exactly what to expect. He's a loose cannon, but he's also very nervy. He's not very, uh, I think a lot of that comes from him just having under experience in the world. I don't know if he's actually nervy. I feel like he's not as nervy as he comes across. I feel like this is situational, what we're seeing here, a dog who, who's, who hasn't really had a chance to startle and then be around a pack whether it's people or dogs, to encourage him to then check things out. And during the, the, you know, the younger years, right, the younger months, I should say, like six months, seven months, you're getting out of the world. He's still kind of still kind of doing all this stuff. If I touch him back here, you know, you feel that? It'll, that's even better because he knows me, but still you're getting a lot of that stuff. So he's got that going on, plus he's just crazy. He also has the thing where he says, I don't want to listen. And that sucks because... It's like active ignoring. You'll say his name and you'll literally see him like roll his eyes and actively, purposely just pretend he doesn't hear you. I'm gonna sniff, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, so he's got all these things going on. I don't understand the world. I'm nervous of it. I'm overreacting, I'm barking at everything, being crazy, and I don't listen. Why am I still in the house? Because you're cute, I get because you're cute. Right? That's not what we want though. We want to say, stop that, they stop that. Do that, they do that. Then we can have a good life. When they're when you're like this, it's really just because they're cute, really, and it's like every now and then they give you affection. You're like, oh, it melts my heart. But it's not practical to live with it because it, it disrupts every every uh, everything, everything. Can't walk him, can't have guests over, can't do anything without it becoming more of a hassle with a dog who just chooses not to listen. That's what I'm getting to. It's not that he's a Malinois. It's not that. It makes it harder because of Malinois. What it is is he's, he's decided he doesn't have to listen to humans. That's how he made it up in his mind. This is what humans mean. I don't have to listen to them. I will change that the way he, he views me. And then we'll see the best version of himself with me. And I have a feeling it's a pretty fucking kick-ass dog. It's a pretty kick-ass dog. And that, that is not as nervy as he comes across. That's a guess. He might be. But I don't think he's as nervy as he comes across uh, as far as genetics. I think that it's just underdeveloped. He's underdeveloped, you know? Hasn't been through enough, uh, like, adversity in a way that he overcomes it and gains confidence from it. He just kind of gets shooken up by things and runs away. Let's see if we can do this again. See the noises, but he's catching himself. That's why we got dogs hanging out everywhere. Look, they're like, they're like little safety nets. He, he panics and then he sees, oh, they're not panicking. And that's a real thing. You know, he sees that they're not panicking through the noises. And for dogs, a lot of the times, they're like, oh, if humans aren't panicking, but humans are not. But if they see their own kind, they're kind of just doing this while you're in panic mode. It, it does bring them down because maybe they think they're overreacting. Maybe I'm overreacting. And the truth is, he is overreacting for a year and a half. If he was six months or something like that, you would see, you would be like, okay, so he's still learning the world. He's a little behind, about a year behind, I would say. But once he gets past some of these big hurdles, he's just gonna grow up real quick, you know, he'll, he'll catch right up. Okay, cool. Yeah, see, he's, we got a lot of shit to go through with this dog. So I don't think he's been around other dogs that are just chilling before that are actually balanced. So he's like, wow, I can just sniff them and they don't do anything. No, Riggins will let them know. Riggins will let them know, but I'll let them know first. Good. Boy, that's a good boy. Riggins trusts me. See, he's drooling over the over uh, Izzy because she's a female, so it's, so it's sexual, but it's natural. He's at that age too, you know, where it's like really on his mind. He's just learning. Good boy, Riggy. Riggy's response was great. Popped up because he went over and kind of put his head over top of Riggins. That's an older dog. Riggins is 
yeah, seven years old, something like that. He's not going to let a dog he doesn't know come up and just start touching him in that way. <laughs> so he stands up quick. I use the e-collar. I shush him. The dog realizes what he did wrong. And so that way he can have an experience of learning what's pushing it too far with an older dog and, and understand that kind of behavior, like what's, what's socially appropriate and what's not. And dogs can teach each other that. Here, we do it this way so that the dog don't bite. So, so you know, unfortunately, one of the ways for them to learn is to actually get bit by another dog or to get corrected, hopefully in a way that from a dog who doesn't overdo it, who knows how to do it just enough. Like the best, I think, to learn how to do that or, or watch a dog do that is watch a mom do it to the pups. That's the perfect way to see a dog correct without injuring. Um, only balanced dogs correct without injuring. Unstable dogs overcorrect and they injure dogs. Okay? So that's why we always need our dogs stable. These dogs are stable. Look at them. Look at the faces on them. They're, they're just chill. Even in the spite of, you know, all these dogs around, all this food, all these doors open. There's doors open. There's all these opportunities. But all these dogs, even the training dogs, eat all. They're balanced right now, in this moment. They're balanced out. They're, they're in the moment. They're not thinking forward. What's next? What's next? What's next? Which is whining, barking, and all that stuff. Fidgetiness. Uh, and they're not thinking backwards. They're just right here, right now. And this chill, um, and this chill energy that's going on in this room. That's why she, Julie, behind the camera, was getting on Tucker because his energy was going up. He wasn't even, like his tail was making a little noise on the thing, but it's really, you get used to feeling low energy around dogs and it feels great. And then when the energy goes high, when you don't want it to, it's like uncomfortable. And I know Julie can probably, you can just feel a dog's energy, just like, it's over there vibrating, you're like, oh, you need to relax. Okay, the dogs pick up on that too. They live in that, in that space too. So this is the comments I've seen our new guy. But he had to learn recall that's non-negotiable. And he has to touch, test that boundary as much as possible, and he's not done testing it. But he realizes it's kind of, okay, so these recalls, when I hear that beep, it's, it's non-negotiable. I have to come to him. And because I got that, that gets a level of submission from him. A level of submission, not full, like he says, okay, I'm going to do whatever you say. But I get a level of submission because if I can recall a dog, and they understand that in order to avoid the correction to come over here and relax, then if I stand here and the dog walks away, I keep recalling it, it ends up relaxing at my feet and I can mark that, right? So I end up, by teaching the recall, not only do we go through attitude stuff, because the dog doesn't want to, uh, it wants to go do its own thing, we also, uh, by, we also get a stay started as well, just for me standing here, and I'm not leaving by choice, because every time they do a recall them. So we get that gun going really quick, and that gets the dog to look at me differently, and then what we do is we start to, um, we start to disagree with his, his behavior socially, so I bring the dogs out, and we'll go after the inappropriate stuff he does to Riggins, the inappropriate stuff he does to uh, Izzy and Sparkle, and that allows me to correct the dog. Not only is it, is it getting me brownie points towards the hierarchy, like the dog's going to listen to me more, but it's also teaching them the mechanics of how to be corrected, because we're using e-collar. Like, what is that? Because this, he's one of those dogs, too, that he feels the thing. He's like, what is that? They all, they, they don't know what it is. So, but once they see me clearly claiming something, be it food, a couch, a dog, or correcting them, and I snap at them, I'm not going to do it here because you'll hear it, but snap and then tap on the collar and then snap and tap. Oh, that's you. Okay, so they see that's how, that's the way I discipline. Once, the, once he understands when he's feeling that, it's because he did something wrong. Uh, now we, we're not going to see all this crazy, like, what is that? When you see a dog get corrected on the e collar and it starts to spaz out, you see all this shit. Um, that's because it doesn't know what's going on. Or, or maybe it got caught off guard for a second, but a dog who's educated can still get caught off guard for a second, but it'll catch itself and, and run into the situation. A dog who doesn't understand what's going on is just going to panic, right? So, um, so that's why we do it over a disagreement, because it makes sense, because that's how it's going to be used. It's there to punish a dog for when they don't listen, so we need to introduce it through those conversations so, that, so it's no surprise that it's like, Yes, you were going to hump that dog. You got corrected. The dog's like, of course I got corrected. I was humping this dog. They even think it's justified, and it helps the level. It helps the stress because they, they get it. They're like, okay, yeah, I, I did hump him. All right. So place.
He hasn't been asked to go in there yet. Good boy, smart dog. See, I think he's got an idea of what I'm saying. I haven't turned pressure on, but if he pulls out, the pressure's turning on. There's that a four. I'm telling you, that ain't uncomfortable. Right place. It's still on. The number is still on. It's, it's been on the whole time. It's still on. Okay, just to show you that he's not in pain. This is the kind of thing. It's just, he felt, I felt something, and I'm jerking. It's a four, and it's on, still. Now he's realizing, oh, that's not so bad. That's when I have to go up. I went to a six. Do you need to know what a six feels like? It feels like nothing. Boom, it's off. Okay? Put a six on your hand and tell me what it feels like. You probably won't feel it. It feels like a fly landing on your skin. This is what we're dealing with. The dog. Right? If I just touched him and he didn't see it, he that, to me, that's a potential bite. That's a potential bite because nervy dogs overreact. They overreact with the teeth. Good. So I'm going to do my work with him, and in a week, I will see how my, I'll know how much of him is nervy genetically and how much of it was just under development. Okay. Because I've seen some really good stuff from him that leads me to believe that he's going to be all right. Break. Good boy. Very nice. Very nice. There's certain things he's learning, like he has a very big mouth and he has very big teeth. And while I'm petting him like this, sometimes he comes around and puts that right there, and I go, I shush him. No, no. The dogs don't like that either. All you know, if you come up on him and you're right here and you're putting that teeth there, a dog who wants more respect and doesn't want you to be flexing, it's going to put you in their place because your mouth and your head is all going above this dog. If you want to be respectful, you stay here. That's why you see dogs who are, they go low when they're submissive and they come up to the other dog low and they try to make themselves seem small out of respect and to try to avoid conflict. But if you come up on a dog like this and you kind of jab at them, you're going to get into a fight. I mean, that dog, you're just basically asking for it. Right? And that's how these dogs walk around at a year and a half because they, maybe they haven't. So they've been sheltered. The, let's just say the average dog in America at a year and a half Probably, if I get it in, it's probably doing this around dogs, not even knowing it's doing that around dogs. It's just how it, it, it'll, it'll go run into dogs. Even if it's just friendly and not confrontational, it'll go bump into to, to other dogs in inappropriate ways because they were sheltered. If they, were, if they didn't have humans in their lives and they grew up in a dog pack, they, they would have been put in their place physically. They would get beat up, bit, corrected, pack attack, to be put in their place. They get sheltered, so they get this false sense of, you know, godliness or whatever. As soon as they get a little, they come here, as soon as they go through that gate, they're in reality. We simulate it as much as we can with this pack of dogs. They start to learn, they start to get corrected for these rude behaviors, and they start to adjust and balance out. They're no longer seeking to be dominant, they're just existing. Like Riggins is not seeking to be dominant, he's existing. He's not looking to go and, you know, let's go mark, let's go fuck things up, let's go, you know, high energy and just have, have a crazy time, whatever these one and a half year olds want to do. He's just chilling because now's not the time. Later might be the time when we go outside and hike and do all that kind of stuff. All right? I've rambled on long enough. I'm going to put him in here and have him stay this time. Uh, see if he does. That's the thing. We're going to test this guy's loyalty here and, uh, and his understanding of the call. I'm going to go back to that four because I feel like that's a good number. Right. It's a good boy. Hi, baby. Good boy. Good. Face. And now I'm turning it on. Uh, in a second, actually. I don't mind that because you tried something. Place. Okay, no pressure that. No pressure yet. Now pressure because he knows but he doesn't want to. That's why. Good. And, and that and, and because he sees it as aversive right now, so it is aversive. Like, it's a four. He sees it as aversive. Like, I don't want it to happen, even though it, it doesn't, it, there is no pain in that four. I, I couldn't even feel it. He associates it that way, so it is aversive. That's why I didn't use it until I seen him say, well, now I have an attitude. Right? 
It's a great example of how I, how, I, how I use the collar as far as when I punish and when I don't. Now, if this dog did not see this as punishing, but just information because we, we've been working a little bit more with him, um, I would turn it on at, in the beginning and then say, oh, I didn't get it right, I didn't get it. But he sees it as, as an aversive right now, which will go away very soon when he feels his low numbers, probably even by the end of the day, today or tomorrow, um, the more we work. I waited, so I said place, and he said this, and he, he sat and then looked at me, and in his head, he said he thought he was doing the right thing, right? Because he, he's not paying attention, you know? He does, I don't think he knows as much as they think he knows as far as commands, and maybe in the context if I had something to offer him, like a ball of food or something, I don't have anything to offer him, he's not going into that mode. So, good boy, we're just existing in reality here, we're not going to exchange uh, gifts, so like you go in there, I give you this, you do that, you know? We're not doing that, I'm just asking him do it so he's kind of like you know this he sits I did not correct him yes it was wrong but he tried and for him that's freaking huge I said his name he walked over to me that's huge um, I just asked him to do something he actually tried something that's huge so I didn't correct him I readjusted my body so that he could see me better and I re-asked him to go to place and then, then you've seen him say oh place I can remember this walk up to it sniff it and then say I don't want to go in there and then sit and that, that's when I said, pressure on. And when I put that pressure on, he went in because he knew. So in that moment, he, he knew I asked him to go to place, but he decided he didn't want to listen is essentially what happened. And he, he downgraded the command, like, well, I'll sit, but I don't want to go in there. Pressure turned on. It's at a four. It's not punishing. But it was enough for him to go in, right? He walked in. He turned off. He's become an educator. We're going after attitude. I, I don't care how good he does the commands right now, I care about how much he's trying, how much respect he's showing me. So this isn't really about place right now, or, or the kennel, this isn't about sit or any of the commands. It's about what he gives me when I ask him to do something, you know? Does he give me nothing? Does he straight up ignore me? Like, we'll put him in situations where he'll want to go out that door, and I can't fucking wait to go out that door. So uh, I'll open the door up, and he's ready to go to the door. I'll back up so then it's me, the dog in the door, and then I'll recall him and they'll freeze. And they'll be like, do I go out the door, which I want to do, or do I go back to the owner who just recalled me? And I can do this on day one, which I already did to him. Which gets us to the core problem, that situation. Of, you're being asked to do something that you don't want to do. What do you do? So now the dog's free. They're able to do whatever they want. They're like, well, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to go out the door. Correction, recall. The dog comes back to me to finish up. Um, I, I let them re relax, and then I release them, and I set the situation up again. And what happens is the dog recalls immediately. It's usually what happens is the dog's not even looking to go out the door because it hasn't been off. I'll open it and they'll say, it's not even an option, I already tried. We got to see the, uh, the loyalty, you know? Um, for example, one of the dogs that was just here, Mary Marley, she never tried to get out. And I didn't know her either. It just I knew her as much as him. And I said, you know, I said, stay just like I do with all of them. He knew. What the that I didn't want him to go out. I could see that. His, some dogs don't. They just kind of like step right out. They don't even hear you say stay. He knew, and then he waited for you to leave. And then he, that's bad. But that's what he is. That's who he is. Some dogs just aren't that. There's literally dogs out there. You'll say stay, and they'll just, that door will be open, and then they'll, they'll kind of look out, and then they'll go, oh, and they'll lay down. They say, well, they, they said, I couldn't go out. This sucks. And they just lay down and give it up. You already assume when you get a Malinois that you're going to have a hard dog anyway. But, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so, but we get to see. And this is my, you know, listen, that doesn't mean that's how he's going to be. That's just what, he's just doing what he thinks he can get away with. He currently thinks that if he's told to stay there, but there's nobody in the room, he can get out. That's going to change within the course of the next few days here. And he's going to believe that what he would say, the, this boundary, he's going to have the belief that this will, the stem will turn on if he steps out with me not in the room. Um, even when I'm not paying attention, he will believe that. So he won't mess with the, with the boundary. That's not true though. There's going to be plenty of times that I'm not watching him, uh, but he still believes he can't get up because of the way that we introduce it. So this is the association. We just keep it going for a little while. Before we know it, in two weeks, you know, he's just doing what he's told just because that's his new reality. That's how dogs are. You change their, their environment for two weeks into something, two to three weeks into somewhere completely different with a completely different structure and a completely different set of consequences for the behaviors that they currently do. And you're gonna see a dog literally just change because that's what they do. They literally just adapt to their environment. So he will, he's in the process of just adapting. Um, and so he will adapt and change. And then the trick is can we get the owners to 
become more like us so that they can, or at least have the understanding that we have and, and kind of set the rules and, and the program that we use here home into that old environment. So when the dog goes home, it's going to try to trigger back into the old uh, associations of this is what I do in this living room, this is what I do with this person, this is what I do on, on this block, you know, when I take a walk. And you, dis you if you're educated because you've been through the program, you've been educated by the videos, you've been educated by your go-homes, you'll disagree with all that stuff and every time you correct him, you're, you're asking him to be the way that we've asked him to be, is essentially what it, what it is in layman's term. So if he's barking his head off, when you correct him, you're not only saying no to the barking, this, the association to this is going to be submission. Calm down and it disengage, that's not for you. Not stop barking but still worry about it. Stop barking and completely just leave, it's not even for you, get out of here. Okay? Just like any of these dogs, I could just tell them to leave. We could have a party right now and everybody's having a good time, I tell my dog to leave, he leaves. And he's gone. You know, and if I hear him whining in the other room, I'm going to go in there and tell him to quiet down. Okay, that's how it works. It, it keeps him in line. He's ready to chill. He had some good time, good stuff. We're going to let him chill. Um, and don't worry, it's not that hard going home. It's, there's certain things to send a message to him that will keep him in line. To be able to read when the dog has an attitude. It doesn't. If you rely on the behaviors to tell you if the dog has an attitude, it's too late. Okay? Are you listening to me? So if you're relying on his behavioral choices to tell you whether he's a good boy or not, it's too late, because now he just jumped on somebody. You can see it, an experienced eye, or even not even an experienced eye, just somebody who's trying, uh, you know, you can see when they're, when they're just being assholes. When they go into this mode where it's like, I'm not listening, you can punish that for no fucking good reason other than the dog's in that state. That's what dogs do to each other. Oh, it came out of nowhere, they just started fighting. No, 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 they were going, what's up, what's up, what's up with you? Man, fuck you, man. They were doing that quietly without barking, and then, right? So right now, this guy, I would love on him all day. The way he's looking at me, that's a good boy. He's looking at me like he's saying, "Yes, sir, whatever you need." He's not thinking, "I can't wait to sneak behind his back," like he was before I did that exercise. So, yes, you, it's all about that attitude, man. It's less about the obedience. That's why we meet so many dogs who have top end obedience but they don't listen and, and even if they do listen they're just they don't feel balanced they feel fidgety or whiny or just vibrating you know you can disagree with the energy and you can disagree with the attitude okay and attitude it can just be the way the dog's carrying itself in a situation that you don't see appropriate you can correct them you can dogs correct each other for that kind of shit and, and if you learn how to identify it then you'll you'll say okay you won't feel as bad because you'll see what he's doing wrong. Perfect right now, though. He's being perfect right now. 